Today I will show you an action, drama, horror film from 2016, titled The Thinning. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the near future, the UN requires countries to cut their population by 5% every year in order to combat overpopulation. America gives its students a standardized test every year, and executes the students with the lowest scores. The test is called the 10 to 241 or the thinning. In Austin, Texas, students prepare for the thinning, which takes place in 18 hours. Simon and his older sister, Lena, sit at a desk in his room as Lena tries to mentor him. Their younger siblings, Corinne and Joey sit on the bed playing games. Even with Lena's help, Simon gets frustrated and says he can't learn enough before the test. He asks Lena for something and gives her money in exchange for a contact lens that he can use to cheat. When he tries it on, it displays the answers to the math problems in his notebook. She reminds him that he has to destroy it after the test. Lena then receives a call from Dr. Perkash, who tells her that her mom had been trying to get discharged from the hospital against medical advice. She asks the doctor to stall her mom and tells her siblings that they have to go. At the hospital, Lena intercepts her mom signing herself out. The doctor pulls Lena aside and reveals that her mom is only getting worse. Even though they can't treat her if she goes home, he oh. explains that making her comfortable might be the most they can do for her. At the governor's mansion, just 12 hours until the thinning, Blake passes a few bodyguards in the hallway. He offers to get them something from the kitchen, but they decline. Instead, Blake sneaks out of the house to his car where he finds his girlfriend, Ellie. She startles him and jokes that the same trick always works on him. When Blake insists that this time would be the last, they sober, remembering the next day's test. Ellie refuses to talk about it and instead decides to show him something that she insists is secret. She leads him to the Bilski's mansion, where they strip and swim in the pool. Afterwards, they kiss in the car until Ellie admits that she's scared about the test. Then Vince, one of the bodyguards, catches them and brings Blake back to his dad. Blake's dad, Governor Redding, lectures his son and tells him that while it's okay to have fun, that he has to pick better moments. He insists that Ellie is a distraction that Blake can't afford until he gets through tomorrow's test, and his final test next year. After that, Blake can be distracted for the rest of his life. Governor Redding gives Blake a hug before he leaves the room. Three hours before the thinning, guards patrol a militaristic school surrounded in chain-link fences, barbed wire, and cameras. Students approach the facility, watched by guards in black masks. Simon bumps into another student, drops his contact lens, and is unable to find it. The guard orders him to keep moving. Blake approaches Lena as she watches students saying goodbye to their parents. He asks for a study guide but she explains that she gave the last one away. Kellen, her friend, asks about Blake, but she insists that she barely knows him. The guards check students for cheating devices, and when one guilty student is discovered they chase him down and catch him with a net. <laughs> Kellen uses his dad's security access to view the security footage and sends it to a reporter he claims to know, named Wendy Banks. He explains that he has her email, though she doesn't seem to respond to his tips. Inside the school, Blake tries to comfort Ellie. Fifteen minutes before the test begins, the guards lock down the school. The students gather in their classrooms and teachers review the rules. Miss Birch tells her students that she's proud of them and that the questions are tough but not meant to trick them. She also insists that there's always a chance. A second teacher, Mr. Glass also goes over the rules and reminds the students that the test is an accurate aptitude assessment. He then orders them to begin uh -oh. and the lights in the classroom dim. Each student picks up a tablet and begins to take the test with the tablets lighting up their faces. The teachers warn the students when they have a minute remaining, then announce the end of the test. As the students wait for their results, some show signs of stress. They squirm in their seats, cry, or look uncomfortable. Kellen is amongst them. Eventually, names of the students who failed are read out. With each name called, a student is removed. Some cooperate, some beg, others require force. Kellen is relieved that he passed, but Ellie fails. The remaining students are congratulated for passing and released to the rec room. Lena sees Simon being led away with the failed students and Blake calls his dad to beg for him to do something to save Ellie. But, his dad insists that he has to obey the law. Blake gets angry and slams the locker. He runs after them and attacks a guard with a fire extinguisher. He tells Ellie to run as the guards are distracted, but she is stopped by the crowd and caught. One year later, the next oh. test is 24 hours away. Lena sits at a table with her two younger siblings, they're surrounded by boxes and one holds a pamphlet that shows that her mother has passed away. Miss Birch visits to bring the family some extra mm -hmm. casserole and tries to comfort Lena about the fact that Corinne would be taking her first test. Meanwhile, Blake works out in his room. He still has a picture of Ellie pinned to his wall. He begins to record a video on a tablet, saying that if someone was watching it, he would already be dead. Three hours before the test, Lena quizzes Corinne as they approach the school and hugs her before sending her inside. 
Governor Redding discusses plans for an announcement with Vince, checking that everything is ready. Then, he checks in with Blake. He tries to convince Blake that nothing could be done about Ellie, but Blake dismisses him. Blake leaves for school and Vince sees him put a package in a mailbox along the way. Lena and Kellen meet up at the school and talk about the fact that this is their last test. Kellen admits that he is nervous but recognizes that Lena probably isn't because of how smart she is. Instead, she's more nervous about Corinne than herself. On the way inside, Kellen runs into Wade, a quarterback that goes on to bully another kid. They wonder if he's actually smart enough to have survived this long. 15 minutes before the test, the school is locked down again. At the mansion, Vince approaches Governor Redding about his son and shows him the package uh -oh. Blake had tried what does to deliver. It mean? Inside is Blake's tablet where he recorded he a video go explaining punch his plan to intentionally fail the test. In the video he explains that if his dad wants to stand by this system, he'd have to stand by the system that killed his son. The governor demands for his son to be brought home, but the school is locked down and he throws a chair in frustration. Then he tells the other bodyguard to leave the room. Back at the facility, Blake waits to take his test and a dark-haired girl named Sarah looks at Mr. Glass. She'd slept with him to try to get a passing score. He doesn't meet her gaze. In a classroom of younger kids, Miss Cole what? shows her students a video before their first test. The video is created by a company called Ashuru Global and consists of a cartoon Earth explaining why the test had been implemented, as a way to deal with overpopulation. It lists how some other countries killed their elderly or restricted the amount of children a couple could have, but that America only lets the smart kids live there, allowing it to become the best country again. The video portrays the kids that failed the test as merely helping the planet to feel better. Miss Cole steps outside to take a minute for herself, a guard tells her that someone else can give the test if she's not up for it, but she declines the offer. She returns to the classroom as the kids finish the video and clap. She directs them to take the exciting test they've been practicing for. The older students also start the test. From the control room, Mason King watches over them and receives a call, which he answers. They're Blake finishes revolt. his test early in the classroom and Mr. Glass notices. Amongst the smaller kids, Nathan raises his hand for help on a question, but Miss Cole isn't allowed no to help, help him, so she you. tells him to do his best. Once the test is finished, Miss Cole tells the students to stand up and follow the leader if their name is called. The teachers read out the names of the failed students. Among them are Nathan, Sarah, and Lena, but not Blake. Mason calls the mayor to confirm that the transfer was successful and that Blake is safe. The mayor then approves the commencement of the thinning. Blake watches as the failed kids are sent down the hall. Miss Birch runs to intercept a guard and insists that Lena is the best student she's had it and that she can't believe that Lena could have failed. The guard checks with his superiors, but they insist that there's no problem and he's told to send Lena off. The teacher holds on to Lena for a moment and slips her a keycard, reminding her that there's always a chance and telling her to get away. In the rec room, students are congratulated for making it. They eat and dance to music. Miss Birch spots Mr. Glass flirting with another dark-haired student. Elsewhere, Governor Redding takes steps on stage for Corruption. a big announcement. He starts by talking about all the ways he's improved things during his time as governor. He talks about the difficult but necessary decisions that had to be made. At the school, his speech plays on a TV at the he's party. Punch it. Blake sees it and leaves. As the governor continues to discuss how the thinning is not a barbaric practice, but is instead leading in innovation and an effort to make the population the best it can be, the failed kids are being led down a hallway. They are instructed to take off their clothes and to prepare for decontamination. Lena slips the keycard into her mouth to hide it. As Blake begins to make his way through the hallways of the school, his dad this announces acting, his though. candidacy for president. The failed kids are given new clothes, then led to a room with a few rows of chairs. They are each cuffed to a chair and the surrounding guards draw syringes. Some of the kids begin to panic. In the hallway, Blake acts hurt to lure a guard towards him then knocks him out. Then, he makes his way to the control room and sneaks inside after Mason leaves it. He tries to use the computer but it requires a login, oh my God, so instead password. he shuts off the power to the school right as Mason has discovered the unconscious guard. Some of the failed kids are freed from their restraints and the guards try to regain control. Lena escapes during the chaos, opening the door with Miss Birch's keycard. Mason calls for Kellen's dad, Victor Wood, to be sent to the control room to fix the down system. The guards fetch him from the party, insisting that it is just a minor power outage to the rest of the guests. Mason then checks on the failed kids, who are back under the guards' control. He asks if they'd done a head count, and discovers they hadn't. They discover that Lena is missing. A guard notices Lena trying to get out a door, but she introduces herself as Miss Birch and tells him that she'd called him when she'd seen a student run down the stairwell. Once he turns his back to her, she attacks. Blake shows up and the two of them take the guard down. Lena and Blake talk and Lena insists that she couldn't have failed the test. Blake admits that he failed on purpose, but that his dad got him out. 
Why, Later what realizes girl, that something is off and when Blake sets off an alarm they climb into a vent to escape. Mason decides that the school will stay in lockdown until the situation is resolved, even as they surpass the time where parents were expecting to see their children. He hears about another guard who'd been attacked by someone who claimed to be a teacher, so he calls for all the teachers to be brought to a holding room. Lena and Blake talk about Lena selling cheats to desperate kids for the test. Blake judges her for taking advantage of them until she reveals that it was a desperate attempt to pay for her mom's treatments, which still wasn't enough. Blake apologizes for judging her. They start heading towards the server room through the vents. Governor Redding's interview is interrupted by news of the prolonged shutdown at the school and the news anchor asks him about it. The governor stumbles without any information, but insists that things will be resolved soon. Mason addresses the teachers and tells them to present their IDs and keycards. The governor There's calls him to get details shit. about the situation and angrily tells them to figure it out quickly. Blake and Lena continue through the vents until Blake falls through one and into a pool below. Lena jumps in after him to save him and gets him to the edge of the pool where she resuscitates him with CPR. They get dry clothes from the lockers and change, turning their backs to each other for privacy. Lena finds another vent and they climb back in. In the rec room, the students who passed begin to get impatient with the guards and one of the guards beats up a student. Kellen records it on his phone and sends it to Wendy. Lena and Blake reach the outside of the server room, but the keycard falls out of Lena's pocket. With the keycard on the ground below the vent, they get to a science classroom where Lena gets a magnet to fish for the key. They make too much noise and as a guard approaches, Lena is able to get back into the vent while Blake stays in the room. He tries to hide, but the guard catches him. When Lena tries fishing for the Banana key, muffin. a guard notices and grabs it. But the guard turns out to be Blake in a guard's uniform. He tells her that he'll head towards the thinning. In the holding room, Miss Birch suggests to Mr. Glass that they get a drink together and as they flirt she steals his keycard. Miss Birch then- Why haven't the guards just killed the students already? Why didn't they, what, couldn't they just stop camping in there and just kill them and then go fix the problem? Shows Mason her ID and, and Mr. Glass's keycard to take suspicion off of herself. When Mr. Glass doesn't have his, Mason thinks that he's the traitor. Lena arrives in the server room and finds a computer. She tries to use her keycard, but it requires Mason's password. She messages Kellen to get his help only to find out he's offline. Kellen receives Lena's message right as his dad returns the power. He sends her a video of Mason typing in his password, allowing her to copy it and get in. She checks Corinne's test score first and is relieved to see that she passed with an 86%. Next, she checks hers, to find that she got a 98% but still failed. Meanwhile, Wade had passed with a 42%, and Blake passed with a 15%. She also checks Ellie's score and finds that she failed, but got a score of 88%. She sees news coverage of Governor Redding claiming that Lena, after failing her test, had attacked several guards, killing two of them, and escaped. He places the blame for the shutdown on her. Meanwhile, Wendy sees the video that Kellen sent of the guard beating up a passing student and she realizes that what is happening doesn't match the official story. Who is that? She responds to Kellen and broadcasts the footage. When Lena realizes that Kellen sent out footage from within the school she sends him images of the score. Then, Mason and Victor spot her on the cameras and she runs. Blake finds the thinning and tries to trick the guards into bringing the failed students to the recreation hall, but they won't accept orders from anyone besides Mason so he tries to fight the guards. Lena is caught by Mason, Insisting she has proof that she passed but he sends her to the thinning where she finds that Blake has been subdued. Kellen receives Lena's proof of the test scores, both hers and Ellie's so he sends the images to Wendy. Wendy reports on the documentation she'd received about the falsified test scores. She reveals that Lena failed despite having the highest score in the school while Blake, son of the governor, had passed despite receiving the lowest score. At the mansion, Vince insists that Governor Redding has to shut this down and let Lena go, but Redding insists there's one more move. Mason calls to ask for huh? his approval to commence the thinning, which he denies, saying that the list needs to be revised. Once changes are made, Lena is freed and told that she had passed, she goes to Blake and kisses him. She is then forced from the room and Blake is forced into her chair. Wade is also taken to the thinning. With varying levels of panic from the kids, the guards approach and inject them. Blake loses consciousness and the school is taken out of lockdown. Lena reunites with her little sister outside, hugging her with tears in her eyes. She's also joined by Miss Birch. Kellen hugs his dad, both smiling and relieved. Wait. The parents whose kids don't return to them begin to mourn as Wendy reports that Mason How King does has that been fix taken the problem? questioning regarding his involvement with the altered test scores. Wendy's report continues that suspicions of Redding's involvement were discounted once it was discovered that his son had been amongst the failed students. Redding announces that he will help to investigate the occurrences and continues by using Blake's failure to appeal to voters that he was just like that. Okay guys, I think this is probably the worst one we're going to watch. A large truck wrong. approaches a new facility. The failed students, including Blake, are lowered into the building by elevator. 
They find a factory that builds the tablets the tests are taken on, where previous failed students are put to work. Is the time Mitch one good? It's a good movie? Guys, this was this was ass. It's not because Logan is in the movie, I don't mind that. Um yeah, I don't give a shit. It was just just the plot is just garbage. The the idea of the plot is good if in my opinion if they deepened the importance of, of the main topic without going to the dog shit storylines that don't make sense that just that have just holes in the plot. And it's fucking ass crack, it's just garbage. The plot is in mid. I think the plot is good if you explore it entirely in all of its intricacies.